This lesson is on slope fields. Slope fields are graphs of functions and relations created from their derivatives. We think of slopes in skiing, and maybe that's a good way to think of graphing slope fields because they're undulating normally and there are several of them and several levels of them. So let's go on and do something with slope fields. Here's an example. dy dx is equal to sine x, and you see the graph of the slope field. Now the slope field itself is really the graph of the antiderivative sine x, which is negative cosine x. But as you look at the slope field, there are many negative cosine x's in here. And if I pick out just one of these and follow the slopes along, I will get the graph of a particular solution to my derivative. So we not only have a slope field sitting here now, we have the graph of a particular solution. Well, how do we create these slope fields? That's what we're going to do in the next lesson. What we're going to do is dy dx is equal to x. That's the slope of uh, some function. And you probably already know what the function is. And we're going to get a piece of paper with uh, grid lines on it or graph paper. We need to make a table first. So on our table, we only need the values of x because dy dx is equal to x. And so when we find dy dx, the only thing we have to do is say, well, if the value of x is 0, then the dy dx is equal to 0. If x is equal to 1 half, dy dx is equal to 1 half, and so forth all the way down. And so we get this little table of values, and we are going to graph their slopes. So we have when x was equal to 0, dy dx was equal to 0. So yes, it's equal to 0 here, that slope, and if it's just a little line that you draw, it doesn't matter what the y value is, the slope is always 0. When x is equal to 1 half, the slope is always equal to 1 half. So we will draw all the 1 halves in. Again, it doesn't matter what y is. At 1, the slopes are greater, so we draw them a little more sloped. And at negative 1 half, do the negative 1 half slope. And at negative 1, a negative 1 slope. And at positive 2, it's more sloped. And at negative 2, it's more sloped. And as you look at the slope field, you see that it does look like a parabola. And if you remember from the last lesson, if dy dx is equal to x, then the function y is equal to x squared over 2 plus c, which is a parabola. And you'll see all the transformations of this parabola up and down the y-axis. We can also graph slope fields on our calculator. And in this session, I'm using the TI-83. What you need is the program called slope field. Put your function into y1, and then run the program. And it will graph the slope field, as you see here, which is pretty similar to the one that we just had on our slide. So, the next thing we want to learn how to do is to draw a particular function with an initial condition. So let's say we want the function where f of 0 equals 0. This means we start at 0, 0 and follow the slope field along until we have a particular graph for the function that starts at 0, 0. So this one would look something like this. Another initial condition could be f of 0 equals negative 1. And instead of starting at 0, this function is transformed down 1, but it's the same function transformed. So you get your parabola that way. So we have just graphed a slope field with two different initial conditions. Let's try another slope field graph. This one we want to do is dy dx is equal to y. Now this looks very similar to the x one, but it's going to look a little bit different when we finish. Again, we have to make the table. So if we have y is equal to 0, dy dx will be equal to 0. And if y is equal to negative 1 half, dy dx is equal to negative 1 half, and so forth all the way down the table with the different values. Now this time, it doesn't matter what x is. We are just looking at the y values. So on the grid paper, 
when y is equal to 0, d y dx is equal to 0. So this is all along this axis this way. When y is equal to 1 half, dy dx is equal to 1 half. So all the 1 halves on y's have a slope of 1 half. And when y is equal to 1, the slope is 1. And when y is equal to 2, the slope is 2. Now if dy dx were equal to negative 1 half, it looks like this, because all the y's are negative 1 half. And at negative 1, for both of them, and at negative 2. And as you can see, this one is very different from the one we just finished because it looks like there are two solutions here, or two types of solutions here, depending on whether you're above the x-axis or below the x-axis. And let's say I did f of 0 equals 1 for a particular solution. That would be starting here and go up in that direction to the right, but when we come down, we will be heading towards the x-axis. It will be an asymptote. If we did f of 0 equals negative 1, then we would start at negative 1 and again do the right-hand side. That one would go down. And then again towards the left, it would head towards the x-axis. A very different solution from the one you did before. You do not know how to do this in an antiderivative form, but that is something you will be learning in the near future. Let's look at dy dx is equal to y on our calculator. So this time for our program, we put in a y, and it does take the y, don't worry about that. Again, run the program, and this time you will see it develop to something that we just did. And that is the solution for, or the slope field for dy dx is equal to y. Let's go on to our last example. This one's a little bit more complicated. It says on a piece of graph paper or grid, graph the derivative dy dx is equal to negative x over y. Now this time we need many more points. So what we're going to do is make a chart with quite a few points on it. And we need both x's and y's because we have x's and y's. So we need an x, this time a y, and then the dy dx. And this time dy dx is equal to negative x over y. And if we start out with x is equal to negative 2 and do all those values of y, which are negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, we will have, for the first one, negative 2, negative 2, dy dx is equal to negative 1. And then for negative 2, negative 1, it is negative 2. For negative 2 and 0, it isn't defined, but it's a vertical tangent. So let's put that in as a vertical tangent. For negative 2 and 1, it's 2. For negative 2, 2, it is 1. So these are the slopes that we will graph. And let's just go to graphing this right away and then come back and do another set. If we graph these on our grid at negative 2, negative 2, we have a slope of negative 1. At negative 2, negative 1, we have a slope of negative 2. At negative 2, 0, we have the vertical tangent line. At negative 2, 1, we have a slope of 2. And at negative 2, 2, we have a slope of 1. Well, let's go back and do some more. Let's say we do at 2. Well, in looking at all the values here, if we put a 2 in for x and a negative 2 in for y, the only thing we're doing is changing the sign on our slope. So we'll have a 1, a 2, another vertical tangent, a negative 2, a negative 1. So let's put those in. So this would be a positive 2, 1, vertical tangent, Let's go back to our chart, and let's put a negative 1 in there. 
if we put negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 again, a negative 1, negative 2 would lead to a negative 1 half. A negative 1, negative 1 would lead to a negative 1. A negative 1, 0 again is the vertical tangent. A negative 1, 1 would lead to 1 for our dy dx, and a negative 1, 2 would be 2, 1 half. So we would go from negative 1 half to 1 half. Let's put that one in. All right, at the negative 1, negative 2 point, we would have negative 1 half. Negative 2, negative 1 is negative 1, the vertical tangent, the 1, and then the negative 1 half. And then again, if we look at what happens at 1, it's the same slope, only positive. So we can do that here, except for that vertical one. And we're beginning to see what this is, and it should look like concentric circles. So if we actually did one with initial conditions where f of 0 is equal to 1, we should be able to draw a circle at 1. If f of 0 equals 2, we have a circle with a radius of 2. So we are able to draw all these concentric circles with our initial conditions. And again, we have the general solution of the slope fields, which is the whole slope field, and then we have the particular solution, f of 0 equals 1, and f of 0 is equal to 2. Well, how would we do that on our calculator? Well, this time we have to put in for y equal to negative x divided by y and run the program. And you will see those circles forming. So in this lesson, you have learned to draw slope fields and determine particular solutions. Many of the questions ask you to do this, but you'll also have matching questions which are just the general form on slope fields. This concludes your lesson on slope fields.